Hi, and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Trade Station Masterclass, and um, Happy New Year to everyone. This is like the first session. I said like the first session. This is the first session of the year for the Masterclass. I'm excited to start this new year, 2022. We have uh, great plans for the Trade Station Masterclass curriculum. And as we go along in the year, I'll make sure to let you guys know what's going on. Um, I apologize for the messaging. You know, we don't have any posted messages on the dashboard at this time. So you don't have <clears throat> a set schedule. However, um, I'm gonna talk about the classes we're gonna do this week so that you have an idea of, of, of what's coming up. Um, as soon as we get some uh, procedural <laughs> issues we're having, uh, with the masterclass notifications and messages, then we'll make sure that everything is posted on the website. But today we're doing masterclass uh, on our regular scheduled time, 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we meet here every single day at that time. So um, if you're looking for uh, a class, that's our regular schedule for the masterclass session. Sometimes we have two sessions in a day. For example, tomorrow is Tuesday. We do our 11.30 in the morning session, which is just ask the experts. Uh, it's a Q&A open to any of our trading platforms. And then we meet again at 12.30 for another class. This week, I, I, I picked uh, multi-data analysis as the topic of conversation. So tomorrow, since it is our technical analysis class, we are going to be talking about studies that work on multiple symbols. Uh, on Wednesday at 12.30 p.m., we're going to work and, and, and work with and talk about multi-data strategies. How can you build a strategy that's based on uh, different symbols or even the same symbol on different time frames? So we're going to look at all sorts of different combinations of symbols and time frames and how we can build strategies around that. And on Thursday, since it's a leveraging easy language class, I thought, why wouldn't we create our own multi-data study or multi-data strategy? So we'll do that on Thursday uh, for the easy language class. And on Friday, we're gonna do our platform essentials. And um, I believe on Friday, I'm going to be talking about Option Station Pro search. Um, if you're using Option Station, I'm sure if you've noticed that there's a search tab towards um, um, the end of the, I mean, if you look at the tabs at the bottom left of Option Station Pro, there's one called Search, and we're going to take a closer look at it and uh, see how it works and what is the intention for that tab uh, to be there. But before we get started, again, welcome everyone to the masterclass. Uh, let's go through some of the disclosures. Keep in mind that every symbol and idea that I talk about in this presentation is for educational purposes only. It is not a recommendation of Trade Station. Also, that active trading is not suitable for everyone, and it should only be done with risk capital. Uh, past historical performance is no guarantee of future results. And anybody that's looking for additional information on these disclosures, please visit our website, www.tradestation.com, and you're going to find all the disclosure information there. All right. Again, Happy New Year to everyone. Welcome to the Trade Station Masterclass and to all the great content that's coming down the road. Let's go ahead and talk about charts and chart styles. When I opened up my trade station this morning, um, this is what I was looking at, IQV. It's a five minute chart of IQV. Um, we're not gonna you know, focus on a symbol in particular in asset class. What we're gonna talk about today is styling. Every trader and you as a trader and as a user of TradeStation have um, your own preference when it comes to style and when it comes to appearance. So um, I decided that today we're going to talk about all the things that TradeStation has uh, to make you customize the chart windows in a way that they look the way you want. Because what we want is for you to have a platform that is most comfortable, a platform that is efficient and that you can work on as easy as possible. And you may think that these are minor details like changing a color or looking at a style, but they do add 
you know, to the whole experience of using a platform. We want to make sure that everyone is um, as comfortable as possible when you're doing your trading because we want you to focus on what matters the most, which is your trading and analysis and everything else should be exactly how you are expecting it to be. So let me go ahead and open up my chart here a little bit. Pressing the up arrow key here to expand my view. And uh, as you can see, I have a regular candlestick chart. And I think candlesticks is the default style when you open up a chart in trade station. It wasn't for the longest time. I believe that for many years, trade station used to pull up an open high, low, close bar. A lot of traders have moved away from open high, low, closed bars. And um, now we have candlesticks. And when you go, when you go to a lot of uh, the popular trading platforms out there, or if you look at a chart on a, on a um, very popular website, a lot of times what they're going to be showing you is a candlestick chart. This is candlestick. Very simple concept. You have your up candles are green and you have your down candles are red. What is an up candle versus a down candle? Well, an up candle is a, is a candle where the price goes up. So it opened up at a certain level and it just increases and the closing as is at a higher price, making the candle green. Green in our side of the world is considered positive. So it's an up candle. A down candle is the opposite. It's when the price drops. So you have a opening price of the bar and then the price drops and it closes lower. That of course is a down candle and we paint that candle red by default because that's the color for negative, at least on this side of the world. When I say the, at least this side of the world is because in other countries, especially in Asia, uh, the colors may be inverse. So you have positive as red and you have negative as being green but not the case here. So just be aware of that because a lot of times we say, well, is the, is the up color? But that's not the same thing in every single country out there. But it is, you know, the defaults of trade station platform and up candles are green, down candles are red. Of course, you can change those colors if you want to, which is we go back to how trade station allows you to customize even the most uh, minor things just to make your experience the way you want. But in style, and style is a dedicated button here at the top of the trade station toolbar, or chart toolbar. Uh, inside of style, you can see that candle is the one that is currently selected. And I can see that because when you look at the little um, icons on the left-hand side, um, candle is the one that has the little you know, blue outline around it. And as you select different styles, of course, that outline is going to move to the one you select. We have another variation of candle, which is candle with trend. Candle with trend is an interesting way of looking at candlesticks. And let's go ahead and switch it to that so that I, so you can see the differences. I'm gonna to go to candle with trend. And notice how my chart changes from just plain green and red to green and red and then hollow and filled. So you have a little bit more information than just the regular candle style. Let's uh, talk a little bit more about what are the differences. You know, on the one we were looking at previously, let me go back here to style candle. We already said that whenever you see a green candle, that means the price went up in relationship to the opening price. It opened lower, closed higher. And whenever you see a red candle, of course it closed lower. So you have a drop in price. Uh, that concept of up candles and down candle changes when you switch the style to candle with trend. Candle with trend here uses the filled on hollow concept to identify you know, these up candles and down candles. So we go back to how candlesticks were originally designed. You know, when we, well, the first iterations of candlestick charting, there wasn't color added to the chart. Candles were either hollow or filled. A hollow candle, and I, the way a way for me to remember which one's up and which one's down, I always think about weight. You know, the weight of the candle. If the candle is hollow, it means that is lightweight, so it goes up, and that's a way how I remember. You know, which uh, which uh, which one is filled. I mean, which one is up and which one's down, the filled or the hollow. So hollow candles are up, filled 
candles are down. That's the way that candlesticks were originally created. And that's what candle with trend uses. But we still see some green and red. So what does the green and red uh, mean? And, and, and a little bit about you know, filled and hollow uh, is that sometimes you may get a filled candle, like the one where my cursor is, that is red. And then the following candle is hollow, but it's still red. Do you guys see that? So when you see these two candles right here back to back, one is a down candle because it's filled. And the next one is an up candle because it's hollow. But why would, a, would, a, would an up candle be painted red? The reason is because in a candle with trend, the red and the green represent something else. It represents how the closing price of the candle compares to the closing price of the prior candle. So not only we're looking at the relationship between the open and the close, like in the regular candle, we're also looking at the relationship of the closing price of the candle versus the closing price of the prior one. So let's go back here to the same candles that we were talking about earlier. We have this um, filled candle that is red. Uh, not, only, not only is it's a, it's a down candle because it's filled, it's also red because the closing price is lower than the previous one. The next candle over though, it's a candle that's hollow, meaning that it's, a, it's an up candle. The, the closing price of the candle is higher than it's open. So if you think about the inside of the candle, the prices went up. However, the closing price of that candle is still lower than the closing price of the prior candle. So even though, even though we have an up candle with a hollow body, it's still red because it's still lower than the previous one. So that's why this type of candle is called candlestick with trend, because not only you see if the candle is up or down in relationship with itself, but if it's red and green in, you know, in relationship to the prior candle and somehow you know, identify a little bit of a trend, where is the price headed, all right? So those are the two styles that show up right here in the style menu. When you click over here and you can see candle, candle, just a regular one, and then candle with trend, which has as a, that additional variation that is important that as trade station users, we know exactly what it means especially if we start using it in our own trade station platform. When you switch the chart to an OHLC, an OHLC are just letters that stand for open, high, low, close. When you switch it there, notice that it just goes back to a regular bar chart. No, no, no candlestick bodies. This is just an old, plain, open, high, low, close bar where, let me open up my chart a little bit, where you see left ticks and right ticks. The left tick is the opening price. So that's the little tick on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, you're gonna see a similar tick that identifies the closing price of the bar. But uh, it's a, of course a simpler view because you don't, don't have to deal with bodies um, unless you know, you're already so used to candlesticks that uh, you don't even think about where the closing or the opening is in relationship to, you know, prior candles. But this is a, a way for you to strip your chart of all those uh, bodies and just have the open, high, low, close bars, you know? So just a chart style. It doesn't really change the way that um, the, 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 the bar is, is built. You still have an open, high, low, and close, but it's, you know, simpler in the sense that you don't have colors associated with this. Uh, one of the very, very uh, common questions here is how do we identify up candles and down candles and how do we make this chart a little bit more prominent? Well, first of all, let me switch to a different symbol. Let me go to spider here. Okay, so this is spider. Let me go ahead and uh, and set the thickness a little bit higher so that the, the open, high, low, close bars stand out a little bit more. 
So I'm going to double click on one of these bars and I'm going to go to the style tab. Remember that this is a, just a class on style, appearance, making things look, look better. Um, here, you can see that open, these are the bar components, open, high, low, and close. And by the way, bar type up here, this just gives you all the different styles that we saw in the style menu. So I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go through that again, but here we have the bar components of whatever bar type you have selected. Which one are we on right now? We are on the OHLC. And if you go inside of the bar components, you can see that each one of them has a specific color and a weight to it. Uh, on an OHLC, they're all the same. In fact, there's a checkbox here that says use same color weight for all components within each bar type. So when you change one, this checkbox makes sure that it applies those settings to everything else. So I can be here in the open, change the color, let's say for example, to red and change the weight a little bit thicker and then click okay. Notice how now the bars look a little bit thicker, they look red and um, you, you just have a more prominent view of the bars on the chart analysis window. So the next uh, question was, how do I make this, um, this chart give me the same you know, candlestick concept? I wanna know which bars are up and which bars are down. I know that I can see the left tick and the right tick, but I wanna be uh, just have a, an enhanced visual of which ones are up and which ones are down. So I'm gonna go here to studies and add a study. And I'm gonna add what Trade Station calls a paint bar. Paint bar just paints the bar a different color based on certain criteria. And let's go ahead and scroll here until we find a custom paint bar. I'm gonna leave this checkbox that says prompt for editing checked because whenever I'm using any custom study or at least a study where a formula is expected, I leave that on so that it takes me to the formatting of the study before the study gets applied to my chart analysis, just saves me an extra few clicks. So I'm gonna click on prompt for editing, click okay. And um, here, the color that I want, since I'm already in the color uh, tab, is a bright green. So I'm gonna select this one, bright green. Uh, though you don't really have to choose a color for each one of these. Um, although when you go here to everyone, you know, they all have different color, but I believe you can only, I believe you, can, you should only, you can only change the, the top one or the main one. I, I think it applies to everything else. But here in the inputs tab is where you supply the formula of what is it that you want the paint to look at to apply a different color to the bar. And what I want to, uh, what I want my study to use is the close, is greater than the open. If the close is greater than the open, then here my color is going to be green. In the style tab, I just have to make sure that it's uh, the same thickness as the candle, otherwise it'll look like a thin line. Let me show you exactly what I mean by that. Let me just select the thinnest line, which is the default, and I'm just gonna click on okay. So the color is off, as you can see. So the color does have, does have an importance on how you select it. Uh, let me just open this up more. I'm not sure if you can see what I'm seeing. In fact, to see what I'm seeing, I have to put my glasses on. Uh, but if you look at the open, high, low, close bars that are on my screen, the paint, does not quite cover the whole bar. In fact, I can still see some of the red around the yellow. By the way, didn't take the green that I specified. Not only that, but um, on any bar that is painted, uh, the opening and the closing tick are a different color. Let me go ahead and change that. Let me right click and go to edit custom paint bar. Hmm. Okay, so first of all, let's make them all thicker. And for the color, let's use green on one and then just continue to use green on the others. 
I think that's the one that I'm selecting, the third one from the bottom. Yeah, so now they're all the exact same color. Once you've done that, I'm gonna click OK. There we go. Now it looks much better. Now using the same concept as um, we saw in the candlestick chart, every up candle is painted green and every down candle is painted red. Even though we don't have a paint bar for the down candles, because those are by default red, but anytime we have a closing price that is greater than it's open, then it's gonna paint the, the bar green. So um, we do have a similar concept. If you wanna, if you wanna double check the coloring here, um, we, let's go ahead and insert another symbol. I'm gonna do dot ISY, and I'm gonna insert spider one more time right here at the bottom. Let me see if I can have different styles here. Let me select this one, style, and I'm gonna select candle. So yes, you can have one chart set to candle and another chart set to open high, low, close bar. In fact, I kind of like this one. Notice that as soon as we added the candlestick at the bottom, the opening tick and the closing tick, they look bigger on my screen. But you can see that the coloring, of course, matches the candlestick right here at the bottom. Every time you have a green up candle, then you can see how the paint bar is changing the color of that bar as we're changing it. So that's pretty cool, right? All right. Let's see, a um, question here from the chat. By the way, you're all welcome to submit questions right here in the chat. Um, I do ask that you set the chat windows to everyone so that everyone can see your questions and we can all follow along. Marcel, good morning to you, happy new year. Can one make the bar up or down times bars ago or last X, example, last three bars total? Um, so, uh, the. Hmm, let's see. So what you mean, let me see if I understand what you mean, Marcel. What you mean is that you want the condition to also look at prior bars and say, well, only paint it if, if you're up or down for a period of uh, two or three bars ago. So you have to have consecutive up bars in order for it to paint. If that is the case, yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would use some sort of a show me instead of a paint bar because, um, well, you can do a paint bar too, but a show me will mark a specific candle that meets the criteria. And if you're looking for, okay, I want consecutive up candles. If I have three up candles in a row, I want you to mark the candle and it's something that you can definitely do uh, using a custom show me. So as you can see, trade station is very flexible when it comes to styling and how you want things to look on your trade station chart. Um, if you want, to use open, high, low, close bars instead of candlesticks, because maybe that's your preferred way of looking at charts. Yeah, you can do it this way. But if you want the study to be the default, let's say that I go over here to apps and I go to chart analysis one more time. If I open up a chart, you know, it's back to the way it was originally. So I would have to repeat all the steps that I did right here on this chart. So if the chart that I just created, if this chart is something that you want to set as a default, just keep in mind that you have to change the defaults in trade stations so that anytime you open up a new window, it'll just carry on the same styling. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. First of all, we went over to the editing of the symbol. So I double clicked on one of the candles, you know, so that I can change the open, high, low, close to red. I didn't change each one of them, I just changed one. But the fact that I have this checkbox checked that says use the same color, wait for all components within each bar type, made sure that it applied those settings to all the different bar components. But I can set as the default. Okay, that's one part. The other part is the study. The study is the one that paints the bar uh, green if they're up. If I want that to be a defaulted study inside of my graph, what I need to do is go to studies and save study group. I want to call this save study group. I'm a green up bar. And then I'm going to 
let me see if this makes sense because um, it probably won't because it, it's going to add the study, but I'm not sure it'll save the parameters. Um, I think that's what it's going to do. Uh, okay, so I'm going to say this. I'm going to do automatically add on new chart analysis windows, and I'm going to click OK. If I go here to apps and I click on chart analysis, hmm, let's see. Apps, chart analysis. You can see how the paint bar goes on. Well, let me go ahead and right click and edit the custom paint bar to see what the inputs is. Close greater than the open. Okay. So it does remember the settings the way that I inserted them, which is pretty cool. So any studies that you want to be, you know, added to a chart analysis when you first open it up, you can save it as a group and then make sure that it's, um, you know, the option that, um, let me show you that to you again. If you go here to studies, save study group, and this checkbox that says automatically add on new chart analysis windows, this checkbox makes sure that all the studies that are here are going to be applied on every single new window going forward. All right. Let's do something here because I want to reset it back to original. So what I need to do is I need to go into studies and instead of um, going to save study group, I need to go to edit study groups. And where it says automatically add into the new chart analysis window, because I may change my mind. I may say I'm kind of um, annoyed by having to see all those studies on my graph. If you want to set it to default, just make sure you go here to edit study groups and where it says automatically add into new chart analysis window, you just have to select none. And that strips all the default analysis techniques from your chart. I'm gonna click okay. So now when I open up the chart, notice that it's back to how we defaulted it. So let me go ahead and go back in here and change it to candlestick. That's the default one. I'm gonna set it as a default. All right, so now we're back on square one. Um, in the style tab, we also have uh, two other styles that you could use, you know, like for example, we have actually just one more, which is the line, line on close. Line on close is just precisely that. Well, since I, since I have a paint bar applied to this chart, you can see that it kept the paint bar and it also have the line on close. But if I remove the paint bar, let me right click on that paint bar and remove it. Then all you see is a line and this line is connecting all the closing prices of each one of the candles. Okay, so that's, uh, that's one of the styles that are available inside of the trade station desktop. I wish, you know, um, our engineers, we add the area charts, you know, um, that are in mobile. Uh, when you open up the mobile app and you look at a chart, you have the option to set that chart to an area chart. So rather than having just the line like this, what we see is all that area below the line shaded with a form of a gradient, which I find very interesting. Yes, Marcel says she loves them. Yeah, I, I think they're very, very modern looking. So um, no, eventually, you know, our desktop will probably add them to the list. When I go to the style tab and you see everything else here, you know, um, <laughs> there was a big de debate uh, when uh, Trade Station first went through its overhaul or its menu and toolbar overhaul. I'm not sure if you guys were here for that, but when we transitioned from 9.5 to 10, uh, Trade Station changed to many things um, related to menus and locations of uh, different options and how to better organize things inside of those menus. There was a big debate whether to consider everything else here a style like Hagi, line break, point and figure, rank code, case. Um, hmm. I wasn't really a fan of putting these here because um, I wouldn't consider, I wouldn't put, you know, Kagi or line break in the same category as uh, what we just talked about, candle, candle with strand, OHLC or line, because the top four that we already talked about, they are pretty much styles of 
the same thing, open, high, low, close, and what it looks like on the chart. The other ones are more like bar building techniques. So it does change mm, the way that the data is being manipulated to display a graph. Like uh, a Kagi is just a single line, a line break looks like boxes. And uh, you know, if you're trying to find alignment from one, from a Kagi line to a, a line break, it's gonna be tough to do because they all build the bars differently. As opposed to, for example, candle and candles with trend and OHLC and line, if you're looking for the closing price, all the closing prices are going to be exactly the same. Doesn't happen the same with all the other ones. So the debate was whether to keep those as style or put them on the time frame of the chart. No, well, I guess you know <laughs> you now know who who won that debate, and they're added here as a style. So we have these uh, price-based charts as a style that you can add on to your chart analysis window. All right. Uh, yeah, to remove the 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 paint bar, uh, you can go to studies and um, edit studies. You know, sometimes it's easier than right-clicking on a particular study. The way that I did it in front of you was right-clicking on the paint bar. Like I right-clicked on a specific bar and I found the option to remove it. But sometimes it's difficult to get that option from a right-click menu if you're not really precise on what you're right-clicking on. But you can always go to studies and edit studies and remove the study from there. Okay. Under style, you can also you also find um, chart scaling, which is part of the style of the chart, of course. Um, by default, uh, Trade Station uses an automatic scale, so the chart will always adjust to whatever is visible on the screen. Um, it'll find the highest high and the lowest low, and it'll stretch the chart so that you can maximize the use of space. Uh, so it's an interesting way of adjusting the chart as we go along. Uh, it's automatic, uh, but you also have one here. This is automatic entire date range. Entire date range is all the data you've loaded on the chart. If I select that, notice how my chart will squeeze a little bit because it's not only looking at highest high and lowest low of what it's seen right here on the graph, and it's also looking at the high and the low of all the data that I've loaded on the graph. So if I scroll back, this is gonna be the highest data point right there. And that's what sets the highest point on my chart. And if I scroll, well, not all the way back, but all the way forward, no, maybe all the way back. You can see that this is the lowest point and that's what's set as the lowest point on my chart. All right, so this is the entire data series. I do a chart on scaling because scaling has a lot of things that you probably are not aware of. And um, we go over every single detail there. So I'll leave that for uh, another session. But here we have um, a percent change chart, which is also part of the style. Uh, when you enable that, it turns your chart into a percentage. So uh, this is a very cool way to look at different symbols together and put them on top of each other and see how they relate performance-wise. Um, because if you don't do that, it's really tough to compare you know, apples to oranges. If you have um, a stock like Spider in this case, let me go to a five minute chart here. Let me disable percent change chart, disable percent change chart and go to candlestick. So, you know, and I needed to go here to Chart scaling, okay, on the screen. So what I was going to say is that, okay, this is a, a chart of Spider, and Spider is worth $475. The scale and the movement for Spider is gonna be totally different than something, for example, um, AT&T. AT&T is trading at $25. We're talking about a $400 difference. So when you co wanna compare the performance of let's say spider with the performance of AT&T, you have to find an equalizer. You have to find a common ground so that you can compare you know, one to the other. And that common ground for the most part 
is um, for the most part, we use um, percentages. Once you translate their movement into percentages, then you're comparing oranges to oranges because it's the same scale. And that's available here in the style percent change chart. Okay. Uh, when it comes to appearance, also, I want you guys to always be aware that you can change the colors from within TradeStation. Now, recently, recently, I say in the past few years, uh, TradeStation added something called a theme where you can change the look and, and, and um, style of TradeStation right here in the file menu. We go to themes and the default is a dark theme, but you can go to a light theme. And this changes not only the menu structure, but it also changes everything on the TradeStation platform. Background, studies, everything. Now, if I go back to the style menu, you can see that everything changes to this lighter mode. Again, that's file, themes, and then you can also use a classic one which uses a more uh, Windows-like kind of color settings where it doesn't really change the charting, everything. It's, it's kind of it's kind of clunky, but I know a lot of users like that. And that's why we have the classic available. I would have liked for themes to also have, uh, you know, other kind of um, skin variations. This is, this is okay. It's light. Uh, the background is light, but I'm um, not really a fan of everything else, like the blue title bars. Um, I may wanted to change those. And those are things you cannot change to the theme. You know, maybe later than the road trade station can add more themes based on you know, the colors that you like. If you want a gray theme, if you want more like a orangey theme, whatever the color is you want to choose, then we should provide, you know, different themes for you to select from. Uh, but this is the lighter theme. Let me go back to my dark, which is the one that I prefer. But in addition to those themes, you can individually change things on the trade station chart. If I go and double click on the background of this chart analysis window, I have a color tab where I can change the color of pretty much anything that is listed or that is visible on my chart. A lot of the things you find here may not be very obvious. So let's go through the list of things you can change the color to and see if we find them. As we go through them, do the mental exercise of knowing, okay, I know where that is. For example, the background, well, that's very obvious and very <laughs> straightforward, right? The background is just what you see right here in the back and you can change the background color by just going here to this little drop-down box. Displayed values, is everything you find right here at the very top of the chart that is not a directional value. Display value is, for example, uh, trade size or trade exchange, bid or bid size. That's uh, displayed values. Directional values, we have one for positive, negative, and unchanged, is the color that is taken on by last traded price net change, percent change, or the opening, just to see if it's something, if the price now is up or down from previous levels, okay? So that's, that's why they're separated right here. The grid is what you see right here in the background. If I go to the grid, I can select a different color. One of the things that I like about, you know, changing the style of your chart is that as you change things here, you'll have a preview right here at the bottom for you to double check your change. <laughs> you don't wanna be surprised. Now, if I click on a very bright blue here and I look at my preview down here, this is not the color that I was looking for precisely. So whenever you're looking for, whenever you're using a dark background, like the default one in TradeStation, you probably want a grid that is visible, but it's not so prominent uh, on, on the chart. So I go here to my colors. I wanna choose something really dark so instead of using that bright blue, I can use this dark blue, which is still kind of in the way. So I can always go back in here into the drop down and click on other. And from here, I can custom the color. I can go here to custom and I can make it dark, dark, dark. And then click okay. Uh, of course, the, 
now it's so dark that I don't see it. So, but you get the idea, you know, you can go in there and custom allows you to bring the darkness down. Okay, that's dark. All right, so that uh, pretty much allows you to change the grid on the chart analysis window. All right, and here we have the time axis labels. Time is what you see at the bottom. Price axis labels is what you see on the right-hand side. You can change the color or the foreground of, the, of those uh, text labels. You have the axis lines. Axis lines is just what separates the time axis and the price axis from the remainder of the chart. There's a, you know, a vertical line right here on the price axis, and there's a horizontal line right there on the time axis. Subgraph dividers, that's if you had uh, multiple subgraphs and a chart analysis, you can change the color to those if you wanted to. Uh, session breaks. Session breaks are those, um, let me bring this down a little bit. A dotted line that goes across the chart vertically, shows you where the beginning of the session is. So that's what the session breaks are. Uh, percent change baseline, that's only applicable if you're using percent change. And strategy automation, disabled, trade manager, execution with confirm, execution without confirm. Those are you know, the colors of the boxes that show up right there on the top left corner of your screen. You can change those by going and selecting the option you want and changing the background and or the foreground. Uh, alerts, enabled, triggered, past triggered, pretty straightforward. This is, um, well, this is for the alert little box that shows right here on the top left corner. You, everybody sees right here in the preview that I have a blue letter A or at least a black A with a blue box around it. Uh, you can change you know, what that tells you by changing the colors here, enabled, triggered, or past triggered. All right, and uh, towards the end, you have correction, pending data, uh, trading app store, and then you have symbol, interval, description, and exchange. So there's a lot of information that you can access and plot on your trade station for use, okay? Uh, Julian is asking me, how can I open a previous chart? Um, if I cannot do it on the TS today. If, um, if this is the workspace that you have already saved, Julian, all you need to do is go to uh, file and then click on workspace and go to open workspace. If you saved it to the hard drive and you go to open workspace, it should be there listed as one of your workspaces. Um, and if, if it wasn't saved, it's not gonna be there. So, um, when you save a workspace, not only be aware of what you're um, of what you're saving, but also where you're saving it. You know, most workspaces in TradeStation are saved to a default directory, but you can change that if you want. If I go to File, Workspaces, and I click on Open Workspace, it'll probably take me to yeah, it'll it took me to Documents, TradeStation 10, and the folder Workspaces that were that's where the workspaces are stored inside of TradeStation. All right. Um, again, play around with the colors, play around with the style. Uh, if nothing is set as default, you can always, you know, close out of the chart like I'm just doing right here. I'm exiting it out. Go to apps and click on chart analysis one more time and you're back on square one. So whenever you come in here and you go to the color and you start changing things around, don't be afraid to take a look at it, take a stab at it. And if you like it, then you come back to the same dialogue and you set it as a default so that every window you create from that moment on will have that same styling. Uh, otherwise, it's more like a sandbox. You're just making sure that uh, functionality works and that you can do the things that you're looking to do. All right. Perfect. So style and appearance, that's the topic of today's presentation. Tomorrow, again, we're going to do Ask the Experts. So if you have any questions on the trade station technology, please join me tomorrow at 1130 Eastern time. That's when Ask the Experts is, um, is happening. And then at 1230, we're gonna take a look at the studies inside of the trade station platform that use multiple symbols and how you can configure those, okay? So uh, I invite everyone tomorrow for the 1230 PM session to learn about multi-data analysis 
on Wednesday. We're going to do a strategy on multi-data um, concept. And then on Thursday, we're going to teach you how to program that in the easy language. So we have a full week learning about multi-data and multi-time frames. And then uh, towards the end on Friday, we're going to do Ask the Experts again with a platform session on, on Option Station Pro Search. In the meantime, I'm still working on the messages to be sent out through the channel dashboard or, and the mobile app. So hopefully we can get that resolved by tomorrow, the latest. Otherwise, join me tomorrow, 1130 in the morning, 1230 in the afternoon. Classes are always happening, even if you don't see them posted on the schedule. Uh, so uh, I want everybody to keep that in mind. Uh, where's the, yes, as I said, the, the, this week's schedule hasn't been posted. I'm still waiting for approval from the compliance department. As soon as I get that approval, I'll post it to the that channel dashboard. But rest assured that we are meeting every single day at 12.30. And then we have tomorrow, 11.30, and Friday, 11.30 for Ask the Experts, okay? Thank you guys for joining me today, and I hope to see you in a future class. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye.